Hey guys, today I thought I'd make a video of me using Dream Studio again. This is the new version, I guess the new UI that's come out as well with the Stable Diffusion XL Beta. So the latest version of Stable Diffusion, you actually select a few different models here on Dream Studio. I really like Dream Studio because it allows you to change more of the parameters and it, I think anyway, it just generates the images faster than uh, the other websites that you have out there. So I had a bit of a play around with it and there are some differences as you can see already just on the left hand side, this little console looks a bit different from the previous old site. Um, I could click it, but it will just open it up and I've got to log in again, but you can click that, go to the old website, I did make a previous video. And as you can see here, uh, you know, like I said, there's different models. I was previously using 2.1 one and 1.5 i believe they just ended up generating images that looked a bit more painterly and you can see here under the style as well there are a few filters that you can actually uh, go ahead and select and apply to your prompt so this is really interesting something new that i didn't see on the on the previous previous stable diffusion engine so yeah, let's have a little play around with that. As you can see here as well, under the prompts, you can actually click this little button here, shuffle prompt, and it generates different sort of prompts. For example, if I want to just, I don't know, let's have a look, which one do we want to go for? Yeah, pen and ink drawing, uh, majestic Machu Picchu, you know, we can leave it there on that style, generates four images, click dream. Let's have a look what it comes up with. Another interesting thing as well is that while this one is loading, I can actually load up another uh, another and just generate a second batch of images. So while this one is doing its thing, you don't have to wait. And that was, a, that was something that was a bit annoying with the previous version. So it takes a little time for it to generate the images. And again, you can also go through and, and select how many images you want. And in the latest Stable Diffusion Excel, the orientation yeah you can only get this square sort of orientation and uh, yeah in the previous models you can actually change it and we'll play around with that in a second let's have a look here advanced settings prompt strength so you can change that tells you if you hover over prompt strength determines how much the final image will portray your prompts so it does less sort of extrapolation so i guess if you use a high number here it's going to resemble this prompt more i'm not sure how much it actually goes up to let's have a look you can drag it up Okay, so it goes up to like 30, actually. So I can click on 30 and let's just click Dream again, see what happens. What does it do? Generation steps as well. Generation steps is how many times the image is sampled, more steps, maybe more accurate. So I believe you can get much more detailed images. So if I click like 100 steps, for example, it costs more credits, like double the credits. Ooh, yeah, that doesn't look so good in that previous uh, the prompt strength. So let me just let me just dial that back. What was it before? It was something, something like five, I believe. Let me just uh, put that back to five-ish. Uh, five. Okay, click dream. And I've just gone 100 steps. So let's see how that differs from that one here. Because, I mean, that looks, these look pretty cool. And, uh, you know, apply different filters as well. Sort of the anime filter that might have been a reason why this one didn't turn out so so great either um, but i can for example just go photographic cool look at that it's definitely a lot more detailed and i mean uh, not too much actually just having a look i think i clicked the anime filter on that one that one as well so yeah maybe some places are a bit more detailed let's try this one with the photographic photographic style up the top and you can also upload an image this is interesting i tried this the other day and i just uploaded an image of myself apply some prompts to it and you get some sort of wacky effects wow look at that one that one looks pretty realistic yeah that that looks pretty pretty sort of realistic and you know i'm going to try to also generate some portraits landscapes and yeah because one of the reasons i use dream studio is to come up with ideas for different art pieces to paint as a watercolor artist so yeah just the the shadows and just different scenery i think you can come up with some interesting reference photos so let's have a look what else can we do here so maybe we apply let's just change this prompt i'm a bit bored of this prompt 
What else have we got here? Ham giant hamster wheel in the middle of the sea. High rise buildings. Uh, oh, this one's called Space Station. So we've got. Uh, also, there's this thing here where you can put in a negative, a negative prompt. So you can do things like add. Uh, I think you put a prompt such as additional fingers and it will be less likely to add additional fingers to hands and things like that which was an issue with the previous models but apparently it's you know been ironed out a fair bit and it yeah works much better without generating additional limbs and stuff like that so i'll leave that i mean let's click that dream again 100 steps got a fair few credits in here and it's ten dollars for thousand credits and i think if you sign up for a free account, you get about a hundred credits to use. So that will, yeah, that will keep you occupied for a while. That's basically like a hundred, hundred images. If you leave all the, the steps at the standard levels. Okay. That one's pretty cool. And it's got the photographic style that I've selected on here as well. So as you can see, I mean, you've got more realistic, realistic sort of images and you get the astronaut looks like Astronaut standing on, on Earth and actually creating a bit of a, a shadow underneath. That's a bit bit odd. Uh, so if I click, say, digital art, let me just lower the generation steps to, what was it before? I think it was about 30. And let's stream. Well, maybe not. Maybe it was something like 50, actually, because 3.33 credits. Okay. And we can also just trial it and see what happens. I mean, that's, wow, that one looks really cool. Digital art. Wow, amazing. That's like, uh, yeah, you can see like some planet details down at the bottom, satellite or space station here, bits of details out in the background. Uh, that's probably my favorite, actually, of the of the lot. But let's, for example, let's play around this a little bit. And let's say if I put it at five generation steps, see what it generates versus, say, uh, well, we already know what it generated on, on that one, but uh, we used a different style. So on the digital art style, if I just go 100 steps on the digital art style, okay. So, I mean, still even on, you know, even on five steps, it, it is generating some interesting images. They're probably, yeah, they're probably lacking in refinement. Okay. So you can see here, uh, oh, look at this one, 100 steps versus, uh, what? what's this one, like five steps, I believe. Yeah, uh, oh, 10 steps. So 10 steps versus 100 steps. So a lot more detail, planets and stuff going on in the background. Uh, I mean, these still look pretty good. They almost look more abstract. Yeah, it looks like, I thought there was someone standing there or something like that. And uh, look at that one here. Wow. That was pretty amazing. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's maybe put in another. Let's try some other ones here. Lower that down to maybe 50 back again. And let's play around. Let's put in, oh, what's this? Low poly, low polygon count. Let's try some more 3D model. Now this one's interesting. I, I use this to play around and try to generate some design of Designs of flashlights and furniture and comes up with some really interesting looking things in there. Oh, look at that. This one's really cool. Almost could be a, you know, like an, it looks like sort of an icon pack or something like that. The way that it's quite simplified and, you know, got these nice warm and cool colors. It understands a little bit of color theory. Well, not, not just a little bit, but a fair bit of color theory. You know, that could be used as a, Nice little reference photo as well, if you're doing some sci-fi art. And you can actually go back. It saves all these images. You can go back, revisit them, visit this, have a look at the seed as well. And yeah, what's this one here? We clicked on, what did I use here? Style none. Okay, so I must not have selected a proper style there, but yeah, kind of getting more realistic sort of images. Let's try pixel art. Dream up some of that pixel art and maybe comic book as well. Again, there's a couple. You know, I'm really, I really like this sci-fi 
related themes and art that it can generate. And I'll show you a little tool. I went through this in my previous video, but I will show you another tool that I use, another website called Lexica. Wow, look at that. That's so cool. It looks like, uh, you know, one of those old comic books. I mean, yeah, you can see here the hands look a little bit better, but I mean, if you look at this other astronaut there, something, I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, some interesting artifacts and uh, yeah, inconsistencies, uh, yeah, inaccuracies in the details. Uh, this one's a bit better. Yeah. It's only when you sort of zoom in a little bit, I think you get that issue, but let's try a hundred generation steps. Let's see if that does anything, does anything or not. Okay. And I still got that in the same style. This one's origami. Look at that. What does that mean? Let's have a look. Let's try origami on 50 steps. Let's try origami. What does that mean? Okay, look at that. So I reckon, yeah, with adding extra steps, you do get a bit more, yeah, still some, yeah, abnormalities in the faces and stuff like that. But I reckon it looks better. Yes. The hands especially. Oh, look at that. It's really part of the origami. Origami one. <laughs> I sound pretty, must sound pretty surprised. Right? And the interesting thing is this actually looks like it, I mean, it could have been folded by someone. It it looks quite realistic. I mean, there's shadows. It's just amazing. Origami, uh, origami art. I can imagine someone would just make an Instagram and post these up and it would and it would look as if that person had just made all these all these origami shapes. Um yeah, interesting. Remember how long it took me to learn how to fold a paper crane and then you just click a button and you, you can generate all this stuff. Let's have a look. What else have we got here? There's fantasy art. Check out fantasy art. And let's have a look. What else do we have? We've got yeah, anime. I think we clicked. I don't know if we clicked anime before. I'll click on that again. Just generate some more. Just show you guys what you know what they what all these different styles potentially look like. Neon punk. That that one looks interesting. Let's have a look. What does that sort of come up with? And I'm really impressed at how how unique all these different styles actually show up and often when you're playing around with stable diffusion as well you, you do need to refine and have a you know just add in different prompts play the parameters to really get the hang of what works and what doesn't work i mean some of the prompts will just be pretty bad and uh, yeah some things just will not turn out well but look at that Incredible. I mean, these would make awesome reference photos. Does it have any, it doesn't even have any artists' names in there. Probably has sampled some of some work though out there on the internet. And you know, something here again, there's three limbs. This one looks a little bit better, but you know, it's got that kind of almost Studio Ghibli style. You know, that what's this one looks kind of like Astro Boy or something. See a bit of Astro Boy running through here. And there's another one there. Really good variation. What's this one here? This one is oh, analog film. Yeah, this is incredible. This looks like a sort of retro space station, like an aging space station or something like that. Just these four here. And, you know, you could probably generate some abandoned building art and stuff like that. Uh, photographs of, generated photographs of abandoned buildings and things like that. Make it look a bit grungy with that. It's, I mean, it's not just a filter, but it changes, I don't know, it changes the subject matter as well. You know, very different as you can see. You know, the... the the context is kind of old and olden equipment 
you know, like when you see those photos of 60s space gear. And this one here is neon punk. Yeah, it's got this sort of cyberpunk look to it. You know, a lot of a lot of bright pinks and purples, contrasted like pinks and warm colors with cool colors and this nice sort of glowy effect as well. Let's have a look what else have we got in here. You know, we've got this one, which is craft clay. <laughs> Oh my god, it actually looks it actually looks three dimensional. Well this one doesn't, but this one looks like it's sticking out of the it, you know, it's like a photograph of an actual of an actual bit of um plasticine or clay or something like that. The other ones didn't turn out so so realistic for some reason. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to try out was to see if I can generate some reference photos that I would use in my personal artwork. So, you know, things like landscapes and portraiture, you know, those are those are things, those are subjects, I guess, that can be a little bit tricky to find a, a good subject out there on the internet and one that is also royalty free. I'm not going to get into trouble. So let's you know, I've already put in Venice photorealistic here, and I've found some really nice images in here. I mean, that one, look at that. I mean, it's got, got a few artists' names in there. Let's see if we can find others that maybe just are more photo, photo representational. Mm, sort of translate, translate Venice. That's the only prompt. Isn't that amazing? It's just one prompt and what? Let's go ahead and pop that into Dream Studio. Okay, and we'll change that from craft, craft clay to photographic. Let's see what happens. 50 generation steps. Okay, we can go back. And, you know, this lexico.art website just really is kind of like a, a, a quick start thing, quick start program that you can just use uh, and find a photo that you like in here. Look at this. This is a steampunk Barcelona main street. Now, this is fascinating. I mean, you've got, you know, elements of sci-fi as well as sort of European vibe, European city vibe in there as well. So you can copy that one and even have play around with it. But look at this one. Oh, geez. There's a, it's even got some like a, unfocused area at the front here this would be this is santa maria della salute i mean it looks like it and when you're painting as well you know no one can really tell the difference unless you know, you're the architect or you really look really closely it, to me it resembles venice there's definitely some inconsistencies there but i mean you could you could very easily use this as a reference photo um, the view doesn't make so much sense though because normally when you're looking down the grand canal it's yeah there's not really boats lined up uh the gondolas lined up like this sort of larger barges things like that coming through here but you could you know you could definitely use that this one here there's even a person figure there and it's not perfect but i mean as an artist this gives me a lot really so much to work on I just don't know if this particular view is accurate or not. Here's another one there. And the way it does the shadows as well, and, you know, the, the shadows have that same kind of turquoisey color as the water, but just darker. And even the reflections of the, of the orange in the water here, that is, that is really quite incredible and you've got these sort of streaks these downward streaks of the reflections of these these uh, buildings here these white buildings in the water as well it knows to just subdue them subdue the colors and darken a little bit and blend it on with the darkness of the water I mean, even these two poles incredible let's see if i can let's see if i can change the engine to 2.1 and then i can move it so that it's 16 by 9 let's click generate again so that it comes up with more oh, something went wrong let me try that again oh 
I don't know what's going on here. One more time. I'll maybe just give it a refresh. So just switch it to Stable Diffusion 2.1 as the, for some reason, 2.1-768 was not was just bringing up this error wouldn't generate me any images so i've changed the orientation to 16 by 9 it's taking a little bit of time there uh style photographic and wow uh, these ones actually look these ones well, they've got this weird thing here it's taken the photographic sort of prompt and done something to it this one looks pretty cool as well um but not really what I'm after. I actually liked these ones a lot better from the latest uh, Standard Fusion XL beta. You know, there's just, I don't know, it just looks a bit more refined and, uh, you know, the colored buildings especially. Just try that one more time. I've clicked Enhance, maybe Photographic. I can put in some more, like, Photorealistic, 50 millimeter. See if that adds a bit more, bit more interest in there. Okay, yeah, kind of similar sort of similar images, but it's not doing. I mean, this one's okay. You get some nice little reflections here in the water, um, but these ones are more. I, mean, I guess it's it's daytime if I put nighttime or something. Oh, I like this one. Yeah, definitely. Look at that. It's the, these uh, shadows coming off the left side of the building. Like that. I love shadows when working with, uh, with, with reference images. It creates a sense of dimensionality and look at that. Sort of an aerial view as well could i put for example night time or night see what it does in here and i'm sure with the new version of stand diffusion they'll yeah provide options for different dimensions and things like that as well and obviously with landscapes you don't have to worry too much about well, you don't have to worry at all about hands and legs and human anatomy. You know, there's no, not really struggling generating these images. Wow, this sort of beautiful nocturne sort of scenes here. My only worry with this is how accurate are these scenes? You know, um, you know, some nice reflections here as well. I mean, no one's going to be able to really tell the difference on some of them i mean this could this looks like it's down some canal in venice uh, and that one looks to be yeah don't know it doesn't look to be the grand canal but taking some influences there but what i really like is these these um reflections in the water and when i go try and find reference photos i find it so difficult to just get you know, a, a photo that has all these elements in it, not enough light, enough shadow, you know, a nice scenic background with some boats and things like that. You don't often have to make up things, put boats in there, have to, you know, make it look like it's nighttime, add some, some a bit of lighting and things like that. And you often don't know how it's going to turn out until actually you, you start painting and after the, the you know, after you've you finished it, whereas here I can experiment, play around and, and see what, sort of reflections and things can work uh not sure what else i can put in here maybe shadows and vibrancy gondola gondolas more than one Let's see what it comes up with and i mean yeah you've got these square references but i tend to work more on a landscapey orientation like these so yeah these might be good i guess if i could cut out part of it like this one might work but something like that one where you've got buildings that are quite tall yeah you're going to omit quite a, a bit of the detail in the in the water and um, it's just going to change the entire view of it this one you could probably get away with it there so on the right just cropping it down to more of a landscape view just get rid of it, 
uh, get rid of a bit of the sky. Oops, let me go all the way up. Let's have a look what it's generated. And these look really quite fantastic. I mean, I wouldn't know any better, really. I haven't, I have been to Venice, but I haven't been to, you know, 90% of the areas in there. So there's even a lamp here that looks quite realistic. It's just blurry. You know, and look at this one here. You've even got a barge coming in here and gondolas. There's people on the gondolas as well. You know, this beautiful light. You know, there's a lot that can be used from these from these particular photos. You know, I mean, I could just put, for example, Translate Prague in another, another sort of scene that I've done a few times and people like. Click that again and see what happens. You know, so landscapes. And I'm mainly focusing on cities and more complicated landscapes. I'm sure if we put in some nature style landscapes, you'd be able to generate them very easily. But, you know, with complex landscapes, like, look at that. Look at this one here. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. And as an artist, you know, the fact that there's some blurriness and things in here, for me, it actually makes it better because, you know, I can then change it up, add a bit of my own flair into it. You know, there's windows here and they all make sense, but when you're actually doing a painting, you're cutting out, changing a lot of these details, you're emitting details as well, you know. But like I said, the, the main concern I have is how accurate uh, some of these scenes are. What are they based on? You know, this... I don't know if that looks like the, the Santa Maria della Salute, but it may be in the wrong position. I'm not sure. Uh, I've never seen that sort of view of it over there. Yeah, but, you know, what else have we got? This one here, I mean, that's pretty. This looks like a photograph. This really looks like a photograph. That 50 millimeter prompt there must have uh, added in a bit of that and this one here you've got the looks like the charles bridge but where is the what do you call it now you can see the, the some little monuments here uh, but you don't see the the entrance of the bridge that large gateway and tower and uh, let's have a look at this one yeah it's kind of like a sideward view so in a representational sense it probably isn't the most accurate can we increase i wonder if i can increase the generation steps and just see if it will generate me some something a bit more accurate oops photographic let's see if i change anything around that photographic um, and also let's swap over to the new stable diffusion excel model and have a play around with this let's see what what it generates from that whether it's a bit different or not go through probably at some stage we'll do some kind of live stream and and run run through yeah just uh, just me using stable diffusion as well on a on different projects uh oh yeah look at that you've got more of a i could just say like just much more of it handles the light really well and it's kind of got more of a stark contrast. The colors look crisper. Um, even, you know, look at this something up. What's going on with the hand there? <laughs> but yeah, from a painting perspective, doesn't matter. I can fix that up very easily. But if you're using this as a stock photograph for your website or something, you know, even this one's okay. You can get away with that to do a bit of post processing. Um, but you know, here again, this is this is meant to be Prague, and got some cars here. Sort of a dreary-looking day. It has Gothic style buildings. I don't know what's going on with this car though. It's sort of floating, and it's a bit too large. Its uh, perspective is a, a touch, a little bit warped there. And this is with ninety steps as well. Okay. 
There we go. That looks like a bit of the Charles Ridge, but it's not it's not in the right place. Yeah. So, I mean, if I go translate Prague, Charles Bridge. Let's dream again. And of course, you know, I think it's handled like these two here. You can, you know, a little bit of an indication of that. The start of the Charles Bridge or that main area of when people think about Prague, I guess. I mean, preferably I would like, this one looks pretty good i'd say uh except for maybe the sides yeah there's something going on this should be a uh, a bridge and they and it's not definitely not that tall as well um a bit of an odd one here you know this is kind of like cartoony sort of style it almost looks like one of those water poured watercolor paintings there's an artist called ryan fox i believe and he does paintings and they yeah this looks kind of a bit like his style um, <laughs> and you've got this this should be over here it has to be transplanted somewhere over here I know there is a dome a building with a dome on it behind to the left so that's almost in the right position but that's uh, yeah kind of an odd view of the bridge as well from the right hand side people usually take it from the other side um, let me give it one more one more crack you know, sometimes when you just keep on generating images, you end up finding one that you like as well. So, generation steps, let's just load, decrease that down to 50 again. Down to 50. Here we go. So, these, I think these look a bit better, like this one especially. Okay. I don't know if that dome is there in real life, though. I can't remember if that dome is there. I'm pretty sure it's on the left so you'd, you'd have to i mean if you're going to use this as a as a reference you'd have to look at the actual photographs and make sure when you're painting you flip you know move that over there okay and obviously you know with the the bridge as well the start of this bridge um the gateway it, there's bits of details missing in here and if you were a local you know if you were a local you definitely spot something that was quite odd you know, this statue even, that's a bit, bit of a strange sort of statue. Um, but it's got an idea. Certainly it's it's picked up some important elements that are in the scene. I wonder if you could just put in something like an urban, urban landscape or something. Urban landscape and see what it comes up with. Urban landscape. Urban street scene something like that photorealistic 50 millimeter night uh, let's get rid of night and leave shadows and vibrancy in there as well okay and it's gonna plonk some weird building here now the venice ones i think the venice ones have worked out better they probably is just maybe there's just more images of venice floating out there for it to generate more accurate renditions especially these four here I and mean, those are like the first four that we played around with and you know pretty impressive for a first go and these are just some basic streetscapes and i think this would be great especially if i was running some exercises for my students and getting them to uh, replicate something like this with the shadows you know sometimes it's difficult to find reference photos um, that have a, a strong light source. I don't know what's going on here. Two, two shadows that can be fixed up. Um, yeah, simple sort of one there with blurry, blurry background. Maybe if I get rid of the fifty millimeter, uh, fifty millimeter, it might, yeah, unblur some of the stuff. Because it's assuming it's maybe zooming in on the subject and the background is blurred. And in, while that's loading, I'll show you just some of the other other bits and pieces I've been playing around with. You know, uh, can we go further down? That origami one was like real cool. Start out with Machu Picchu. I was playing around with Venice before as well. Um, 
some anime prompts here. Some anime prompts. Just gotta wait for it to load. Don't know why it's not it's not um, not loading. But you can also create some pixel art. So look at that. So these I mean, they could be used as icons or something like that. You know, little emojis. You could generate emojis for your particular brand. Um, you know, like that's like a fantasy castle. I think this is the photographic yet yeah, photographic filter that I used. Then this one here is some kind of artistic. What is it? What did I use here? It was oh no style. So it's kind of gone with an artistic, painterly feel to it. You know, here I was trying to play around and um, get it to generate some tools, some like art and painting tools. You know, it's just created some nonsense stuff and looks like a tap or something here with I don't know what that is, but I I just think it's fascinating how it. Uh, that that it just comes up with all these ideas. I mean, some of these you could probably could spark an idea for yourself as well. You know, that looks like a compass tool or something like that. Um, kind of nonsense stuff when you look a bit closer, but from when you look at it from a far like this, it's like okay, wow, that's that's pretty cool. What's I mean, what's this thing? It's like some kind of kind of plunger or something like a coffee plunger or or, or something. You know, and these paint brushes there in the back okay some more venice ones and this one i actually quite liked you know the, look at that light source seems to be coming from the top right hand corner and it's accurately portraying that light source is a bit darker on the right hand side a little bit darker and the reflections of the sky as well look at that the, it handles those reflections very very well okay you know, here's just some more. I was just playing around with a few other bits and pieces. Also generating some, I typed in futuristic flashlight designs to see if it could come up with some, you know, some interesting designs. You know, here there's uh, details here. This is of, I've used a previous prompt that I used in a, another video the last video i did doing more portraiture related stuff and you know that definitely has come a long way so anyway let's have a look we'll go right to the top um that was this was also i was trying to generate some some other images and you can see here this is actually an example if you go up um, and just click about or whatever on the top right hand corner of the screen it will give you uh, a bit of a guide on adding these prompt weightings so I believe if you add one it's full weighting and um, anything like below one it will weight it less so for example uh, let's have a look here you know we've got uh, yeah if you want to decrease the weighting of a particular thing like centered you can put it like 0 0.3 okay so i'll put 0 0.9 here and yeah it's sort of changed a bit of the background um you know let's have a look here one one yeah i've just been playing around with it yeah so you can just change the weightings of the prompts so particular specific prompts you know if you want to have you know eliminate trees or something but you still want trees in there, but you want them reduced down a little bit, you can put, you know, what's it, 0 0.2 instead of 1 next to that particular prompt. You know, these are just some anime ones that I was playing around with the other day, and I was actually quite impressed with some of these anime ones. I believe if I keep going down, there's a few more to show you what I was playing around with. Um, keep going. This was just some more space related stuff, but here we go. You know, just some anime related forest scenes. And especially if you're an artist and you're looking to looking for to, to learn how to draw anime and get some ideas. I mean, you can just continually generate all these and look at that. I mean it looks like it's just cut straight out of a film. I use Princess Mononoke as a prompt in there. What a popular, popular anime. 
yeah and this was <laughs> I was playing around also with just uploading my image in there and then applying the filter with some prompts and uh, playing around the prompt strength as well and you can and it's just changing some images of myself in there some of them look really really weird like look at this one there's like an anime version some anime versions of me like that one maybe looks a bit bit more like it and you know look that's even changed this is a photograph one of my friends took of me my artist profile and it's changed the, the paintings in the background i didn't paint any of this stuff you know it's even changed all that it's changed the book um it's got me holding a, a pen or pencil or something like that you know what's going on here yeah, it's great fun to play around with things like this as well you know you can generate like inner interiors of buildings that look quite realistic they almost look too picture perfect like a 3d rendered image and it's been fascinating i've been reading that these images have also been used fraudulently in cases just because they've you know they look so they look so good i mean once we can yeah i mean look at that even the the shadows of each of the legs actually doesn't make so so much sense when you look closely at that at the legs of them but it, it's it's one of those things that your mind will just look at an image as a whole and will make sense of of it but when you actually zoom in on it you're like okay you know what's that you know why is there so many legs there what's going on with the back plate of that you know of that stool why is it missing half of it and why is it twisted in such an awkward position and of the lights why there's so many wires hanging from the from the top what's this thing coming out of the the window you know these are this is like an anime style kitchen i put the anime filter on i think this looks really cool for small pen and wash designs pen and wash paintings i mean being able to to, to use that maybe add some people in there as well this one looks a little bit better okay these stools look good as well i mean for the most part your mind will just make sense of it but it's interesting and I, i'm really keen to see what improvements it will come up with the next version stable diffusion uh, after the beta testing as well i believe I mean, what we're doing here is actually training it. So, yeah, that looks okay. Uh, what did I use here for this last one? I used photographic, prompt strength 5, no style. Yeah, not too bad. Let's have a look and let's see if we can get some. Portraits, a photo of a woman. Let's see what it comes up with. Sort of still loading. Uh, maybe we can have a play around and I'll change it. Let's put it to the previous stable diffusion model and I will generate another set in the previous one, generate another set. 2.1 and 1.5 so you can sort of see what it looks like with the different stable diffusion models so that's the that's the recent one um stable diffusion xl what's it xl beta incredible these look it's got the eyes it's got the eyes done well too there's a little bit of funniness underneath there in the iris but uh, for example, this photograph of that woman looks great. There's even, you can see there's like little freckles and things like that as well. Um, details in the face, contours of the face, you know. And uh, that's, this would be 2.1, I believe, Stable Diffusion 2.1. Um, you know, even the lighting makes sense. Light source maybe coming from the, uh, actually maybe not. Yeah, uh, lighting coming from the left, I think. Yeah, 
looks like a kind of more older style image. This one as well. And you know, as we keep moving back, yeah, you've got this issue with the hands going on again and there. <laughs> the, the, the eyes always make me laugh in the previous previous models. The people just look a bit a little bit wonky. Uh yeah, that this was what's this stable diffusion 1.5. Now my, amazingly this, this one actually looks pretty good. What's oh okay. I think this one's been blurred due to some nudity. Okay. Hmm. But I would say that the yeah, the newer version SDXL just seems to have come up with some much more I wouldn't say detail, but they they're more put together. You know, can I increase let's increase it to like one hundred steps, see what happens. You chew through these credits pretty quickly, that's for sure. This is great fun though, and really the first time that uh in history that we can click a button and just generate images out of thin air with so little effort and i try to look at this as a yeah more of a tool that i can use as an artist these ones look incredible look at that i mean you know they're saying also that uh well there, there's already websites where you can get ai models for your business as well can we have a dark haired woman what does it do here okay maybe we can change it let's put of a dark haired uh, asian woman and what does it come up with can we put, specify races and does it come up with uh, races, but you know, from different countries and see if it comes up with people that actually look like they're from, from those countries. Uh, Chinese woman, let's put that in there. Japanese woman. And I think that's important because, you know, you might want to paint a particular subject Okay, there we go. This one looks almost like it's CGI, like a generated image. Um, yeah, that's with Russian woman in there. Sort of looks Russian. <laughs> uh, yep, Chinese woman and Japanese. I mean, yeah, they're, they're definitely, I mean, I think anyway, like, she looks Japanese. Some of the features as well. Yeah, this is quite amazing. Um, what else can we try in here? Put a photo of a uh, bearded man. See what it comes up with. Oh. More steps may be more accurate. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen a huge difference whether you're using 50 steps or 100 steps as well. And it seems like the more broad your prompt as well, the larger uh, sample size of images it can potentially draw from. Okay. And yeah, you can see here especially in the first few sort of images more sort of caucasian uh, base features and things like that as well just maybe due to the sampling of the images that are out there um just to, yeah the, let's have a look like this one looks pretty good look how look how realistic that one is even the backgrounds blurred out um asian man let's see what to do yeah look at that it's chewing through the chewing through the credits for sure the more you mess around with some of these 
advanced features. I, I wish that I could change the orientation, maybe have like a portrait style orientation as well, and potentially enhance the image, you know, enhance the image and uh, upscale it. There are other websites though where you can upload the image and scale it. So it hasn't got the eyes so right. Look at that one there. These the first, <laughs> the first and the and the last image doesn't look too good. Second and third image, pretty decent. Yeah, I'd say pretty decent images. Um, maybe we go side. Let's have a side profile of woman. You know, I mean a lot of these could really be used as um, reference photos without having to worry about copyright. Well, at the moment anyway, so I profile for women exaggerated. Oh, I forgot to put exaggerated shadows. That's all right, shadows. Uh, let's see what it comes up with. Then what it's gonna exaggerate, yeah, exaggerate it. It's just, yeah, maybe it's exaggerating the light or the, yeah. But these are very usable and you know, even the, the light, the lighting on the face as well is accurate. Here's all lighting coming from the right hand side, casting shadow. Maybe here should have a bit more light, but things that can really be easily fixed up. Exaggerated shadows, you know, and again, if you don't want a photographic sort of photographic sort of image, you can, you know, change it to anime style or any other style in there that might interest you uh, might interest you more okay another thing that i was playing around with as well is just some sci-fi um yeah some sci-fi prompts and coming up with some carrying up with some images that i could use play around with in watercolors i found a really cool one here that one here and this has got the a few artists actually listed in in the prompt itself but i mean i thought this one looked really cool the f people in there like i mean guys the head's a bit small I mean, all of them i mean they look like a bit a bit funny but that one looks okay uh you know it looks like some kind of you know futuristic japan and, uh, and the darkness here and these floating lights i mean that's a quite an amazing little scene I'm actually going to copy that one have a bit of a play around with that. Okay, so look at that side profile of woman and incredible. Just amazed at what it can come up with. Just putting in a few words in here. Okay, but yeah, it would be interesting to see once it's out of the beta stage when we can use these other orientations, maybe generate more of the body, especially if you're into figure, proper figure uh, drawing as well. And, you know, just see how how the, the AI actually handles human anatomy. Okay, so let's try this one here, that prompt. Okay, I've just copied that prompt over from Lexica. Dream, and let's see what it what it comes up with doesn't I don't think it tells you the engine yeah it's model lexica aperture v2 so they have their own I don't know their own models which are still believe stable diffusion models but uh yeah got a bit of that going on but not yeah it's this looks kind of more realistic almost like graphic novel you know graphic novel type style you know graphic novel can i change that around and see what happens it's also could be due to the engine itself i could change it back and bring it to stable diffusion 2. we get rid of this prompt graphic novel and i can change the engine maybe back to 2.1 and change it again to landscape style orientation let's try 2.1 as well maybe it will start to just resemble uh, resemble those those images that we saw on Lexica or this one here anyway. Uh, still generating. I'm not too pleased with these two. They uh, look too cartoony for my liking. Not my 
type of thing. I prefer more grungy style sci-fi images, Blade Runner type of things, uh, styles. What's this one here? Yeah, it looks like a Godzilla sort of Ghostbusters fighting with Venom in the city. You know, these are just prompts that other people have made up, put together. Um, let's have a look. What is it generated? Mm, that has not worked out very well at all. What did I use here? I used Stable Diffusion 2.1. Maybe I can... No, was this 2. Point... No, I didn't didn't get it to use the 2.1. So, oh, yeah, there's some issue there. Unfortunately, with 2.1, I don't know why, but it, it just doesn't. When I flick it back from XL to 2.1, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, yeah, if I, if I get, put it back to the landscape orientation, sort of, uh, sorry, landscape style, dream again. Okay, now it's working. I guess you just got to fiddle around with it, flip it back and forth. Uh, you know, I don't really like this. This looks like kind of a Where's Wally type of situation. I don't know what is going on. I don't know what is going on in here. Pretty sure. It... Yeah. So much. So much going on in here. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah. These first ones make a bit more sense. We'll see what comes up in the 2.1 version. And, you know, another thing I can do, Blade Runner City. Just see what it comes up with that. Blade Runner City. Okay, so it hasn't really done a great job in terms of, yeah, the, these two look a bit better they probably could be refined and um, add some more features in there blade runner city um hyper hyper realistic hyper realistic blade runner city and if you actually add on maybe like blade runner 20 2049 or something like that it might take some Takes an influence. Let's have a look. Okay. So this one looks pretty cool. Ooh, look at that one. Simple, simple looking scene, isn't it? Big. Maybe we can chuck that in there. Back to, you know what I, you know what the issue might have been. I, I think I had it on anime. You look. Yeah, I had it on anime. Let me try that one more time, but on a different filter. Um, let's go back, back, back. Um, okay, let's just put it back onto, maybe we just put onto no style, hit dream, see what it comes up with. Ah, you, you know, that's it. So it must have been that quite simple, but we'll see what it comes up with. You know, I've used a couple of stable diffusion models now. Go back to the 2.1 as well. And we'll see what it comes up with. Okay. Yeah, that, I think that looks... You've still got a bit of an anime vibe to it, but this looks more of a graphic novel. A bit more grungy looking. I like that. More of what I'm, you know, angry... Angry people walking around the city. You know, whereas these ones are just, yeah, definitely more of an anime style. Um, you know, these ones did not turn out so well at all. Um, God, that's that's really weird. Just switch back to the Excel. Then if I go, for example, enhance. Um, oops, I've clicked it twice enhance and maybe try some other styles what else do we have photographic we try photographic um 
Yep. Okay, so going back to what we were trying to play around with before, I think we were, we were sort of in the Blade Runner, hyper-realistic hyper Blade Runner prompt. Yeah, these are starting to look st still quite similar to the original images that we had in there. So yeah, they do, the prompts need a bit of refinement and yeah, definitely, you know, some of these proprietary uh, engines and things like that, the uh, styles that other websites use, sometimes you're just not going to be able to get that exact same effect. Let's try this one. Paste this in here. Big robots with iron suits guarding a night sky. Um, yeah, look at that. That is... Kind of reminds me of those zombie films with people climbing over the top of each other, you know? It'd be creepy looking. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't really sort of sort of looks it's more sort of photographic. Can we click just enhance? Maybe. Um yeah, I like that. I like that one. But it's uh, really taking on board that robotic prompt a lot more uh, slum photography cyberpunk style okay there we go this is something i want to try out um yeah these these look a bit sort of like kids movie stuff i don't really like that at all it's really focusing a lot on the robots robots and and that's another example where you might want to use that uh, prompt strength parameters as well look at that ah now that's cool pretty realistic with that enhance so maybe if we go neon punk you know neon punk it's got octane render in it as well um you know even this one here this looks pretty this looks pretty pretty awesome with a I believe an artist's name in here too okay yeah it's okay um almost too realistic so you know you, you do need to play around with this a bit before you find you yeah, find something that works for you that you actually like okay but yeah, I guess just some examples of the applications. We've, we've gone through landscapes, generating landscapes. We've gone through generating portraits, uh, landscapes based on real scenes as well. Portraits, those worked very well. I, I think that they probably work the best out of all, all of them. Um, and the, you know, those Venice landscapes as well. Did a bit of sci-fi art, also showed you how to use Lexica to get some ideas and start prompting as well so i also have another uh, few links that will be helpful for you in terms of building prompts from scratch as well so check in the description of the video i hope this was helpful for you and if you have any questions let me know in the comments below i'll do my best to help you out thanks for watching